This is an electric air taxi, like a giant drone that carries people, and there are dozens of startups building them. So this is an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that does the job of moving cargo and passengers between the big city, the surrounding suburb, and the big airports. The technology will first be used for deliveries before actually transporting people, taking off and landing like a helicopter, though they're quieter and less complex. Fewer failure modes, fewer parts. So that's one of the key benefits to a system like this, is inherently more reliable. As the technology matures, the aviation industry is betting millions of dollars that air taxis will help cut carbon emissions and beat traffic congestion. In the past few months, United Airlines ordered 200 air taxis from EVE Air Mobility. American Airlines signed for 250 from Vertical Aerospace. While companies insist this is the future of transportation, they'll still need government stamp of approval before they can take to the skies. There's going to have to be some form of air traffic control and, and pilot certifications and operational requirements so that this can all be done safely. Air taxi makers are ramping up test flights as regulators around the world evaluate the new machines. Flying at low altitudes in urban areas raises big concerns, and there are other obstacles. We have the technology. Uh, it's literally the infrastructure to catch up and uh, make it possible. A Canadian business is rising to that challenge. V-Ports plans to build terminals called Vertiports, a place for air taxis to take off and land and charge their batteries. We are talking about, by 2030, almost one trillion of business. So basically there is a pressure on the regulator to proceed. Some companies are hopeful they can take flight by 2024. It's stiff competition and not every startup will survive. Scale it, bring down the cost and make this technology available to people around the world. So the race is on to get air taxis off the ground. Nisha Patel, CBC News, Detroit.